Hello, my friends. I'm doing this episode 12 of Finding Grace because Grace Vanderwall in the last week or so has gone in two places that I don't think has ever been done before in literary poetry or musical poetry in the history of both. Those two places are, one, she spends an entire poetic stanza, phrase, verse, song, being self-critical of herself, being honestly self-critical. I don't think that's ever been done before. I'm not familiar with it. And then two, she pers doesn't just personify the walls in her bedroom for the last three days, but she turned that personification is the personification of her conscience, her, her moral identity, watching her. Uh, in her lassitude for three days, in her laziness, for three, in her th in, in dwelling on her life, the problems in her life for three days. And the walls, her conscience, are observing and talking to her. But, and she has tried to hide from the walls, from herself, the fact that she has been doing these things, but she can't get away with it, with the walls, because she's a shitty actress the name of the song, obviously, and that she did about a week ago. And this, this is phenomenal. The whole idea is phenomenal. I could actually stop this analysis right here and just say she's done those two things. She's been self-critical for the entire poem, and then she has taken personification to a whole different level. Personification, obviously, is giving human characteristics to an object, to an inanimate object. And that's what she does here. Now, personification is widespread. It's been done thousands of times in poetic history uh, by many of my favorite poets. Obviously, it's been done many times, and it's also been done hundreds or thousands of times in music as well. And uh, just to give you an idea of of it being done. Just a few examples. The reason I'm not going to stop it is I want to go into how Grace accomplishes this. And it's extraordinary. Before I get into these examples, I just wanted to say that she uses free verse and rhyming verse, regular verse, to get across the facts and the emotions in this, in this song, The sh Shitty Actress. And then the way she does it, her word structuring, is phenomenal. Now I'll get into, I'll talk just a, for a minute about free verse and uh, rhyming verse here in a second. But here are some examples of personification that have been done. My two, two of my favorite poets are Emily Dickinson and William Shakespeare. Emily Dickinson in her um, poem, Hope is Feathers, Feathers being the personification of hope. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in my soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And of course, Shakespeare's famous sonnet 18, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. So the rough winds being personified as something that are shaking the darling buds of May. And of course, summer... Summer too hot, the eye of heaven shines, and often in his gold complexion dimmed. Okay, so lots of personification there in that famous sonnet. And then there are uh, four, I'll just do four snippets of four songs that uh, personification is used. And <clears throat> one of them is actually called Hello Walls by Willie Nelson. Interesting. And I think I mentioned this in my reaction to Grace's shitty actress. Anyway, the walls are personified. Usually personification is done to express some aspect of one's own personality or as sort of a companion. And most of the time it's used as a companion of somebody, sh of that inanimate object sharing the, someone's emotions. Um, and this is what it is in Hello Walls by Willie Nelson. Hello Walls, hello, hello. How'd things go for you today? Don't you miss her? since she's up and walked away. <laughs> so he's sharing his emotions. The walls are part of his being. And uh, then, of course, he goes into window uh, and ceiling and stuff in that song as well. So it's not just walls. And then the famous song Careless Whisper by George Michael. I've always loved 
this phrase by him, I'm never going to dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Guilty feet. Now this gets close to what Grace is talking about in Shitty Actress. Uh, sort of the guilt that she feels. She's been caught, basically. But his feet are the personification of his guilt. And that's really nice. And then, of course, the famous song, Summer Wind, sung by Frank Sinatra. The summer wind came blowing in from across the sea. It lingered there to touch your hair and walk with me. Boy, I love that. It's one of my favorite phrases of all time. But the wind personified, and it's touching her hair, and it's walking with him. So, great personification. And of course, the famous song, Sound of Silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Darkness is a friend, personified, because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. So a vision is able to leave seeds. So great um, personification in all of that. So the song, Shitty Actress, uh, uses the free verse and the rhyming verse. I'm going to say rhyming verse instead of just verse because a lot of people get confused on that. There are four general categories from which you, for from which you can use you can use to do poetry and one is prose uh, Shakespeare does a lot of prose speaking uh, in Hamlet and other places basically prose is almost like writing paragraphs in a novel but it's cut up a little bit so that it's more poetry and then so it's prose poetry and then uh, free verse which Grace uses here that I'll get into in a minute free verse has no rhythm in it. It's uh, the sentences are longer and shorter. Sometimes there's a pronoun missing. Sometimes there's a verb missing, and um, so it's sort of a staccato. It's the way people talk a lot of times. That's what free verse is, um, but it sounds like poetry. And uh, then you've got blank verse. Blank verse has rhythm and rhyme. Uh, has rhythm but no rhyme. So a lot of times it has the same number of syllables, iambic pentameter, for instance, and then it goes along like that. So you get the rhythm. So there's that sort of good feeling of rhythm, but you don't get the full uh, emotional feeling that rhyme gives. And that's where rhyming verse comes in. So rhyming verse, rhyming verse and blank verse can vary up the rhythm a little bit. But generally speaking, there's the same number of syllables in both. So what Grace does on this is the free verse sounding like somebody's talking, and then the rhyming verse, which is more of the emotional feel. The one, one, thing, one thing that free verse allows you to do is get across facts. Because you're not distracted by rhyme or feeling the rhyme, what you're doing is listening to what somebody's telling you. And that's what Grace does when she starts off this and several times during the actual song itself. So. I want to talk about the ingenious way that Grace, I don't know, unconsciously, consciously does. She's almost got a sixth sense for how to use poetry, how to jump in and out of different um, methods of poetry. So, shitty actress. So, the first verse. Lately I've been isolating myself too much, I swear. These walls have seen all my lowest points. I can hear them mocking my words, they scream them back at me. Yeah, so lately, I lately I've been isolating myself too much. I Okay, so I just want to go over that real quick. Lately, I've been isolating myself too much. She doesn't say I've been isolated too much. She takes responsibility, which is really interesting. Grace does this almost all the time. She takes responsibility. She doesn't have it in the passive sentence. <clears throat> I've been isolating myself too much. And then she ends that, that sentence with I. And then there's a slight pause before she says, swear these walls have seen. So that, that slight pause allows for, it's basically implying reflection on her part and then redirection. Because all she's done is say, lately I've been isolating myself too much. So a lot of times, most singers, most 
average singers would probably might start it out that way but then they would say i need to get out more i've got to live life i've got to go smell the flowers etc so that's a fairly innocuous slightly critical uh line so it it's the the poem the song doesn't start out highly critical boy it gets into that later and i'll tell you, and we'll talk about how that happens so i swear these walls have seen I love that so our eyes go from her she's been isolating herself we got a vision of her in her bedroom or wherever and now it's turned us to the walls the walls have seen so the personification there is not yet her conscience just it's just the walls have seen the walls have been watching her in the bedroom so she's leading us in now have seen all my lowest points. So it's still almost like um, Willie Nelson's Four Walls, you know, sharing the, the loss or the pain of someone gone or sharing something. So at this point, there is no moral judgment from the walls as her conscience. But now, okay, I swear these walls have seen it, all my lowest points. I can hear them, the walls. I can hear them mocking my words so now the walls are taking action and i don't know of this ever being done if the, if if you know of any poetry <clears throat> any musical poetry or literary poetry that does this and especially does it consistently throughout the the poem or the song please let me know i don't think this has been done where an inanimate object becomes a person's conscience moral identity i can hear them mocking my words they scream them back at me so when she says i can hear them mocking my words you can almost still at this point think that the walls are just echoes of her talking to herself which she says later in the poem she's been talking to herself so at this point maybe it's not the, the walls are not her conscience mocking my words as in the words are coming echoing back at me but then she takes it further and says they scream them back at me that to me says more than an echo and later it's clear that the walls are her conscience but i think already she's saying that the walls are her, her conscience judging her in action so then the next verse okay i get it i know that i've kind of fun it's her talking back at her conscience at the walls <laughs> how phenomenal is this okay i get it and that's defensive right okay i get it i get it i get it that's defensive it's a little bit defiant and <clears throat> she's taking this hit this mocking and she's she's understanding where the mocking is coming from okay i get it i know that i've kind of fallen off so mea culpa she's now almost apologizing to the walls to her conscience haven't left this room now we get into some more detail now, one thing I want to go back on just real quick is notice at the beginning of this, lately I've been isolating myself too much, swear these walls have seen all my lowest points, I can hear them. There's no rhyming in this. This is free verse. This is her giving us the juice, just the facts, ma'am. She's giving us the facts and she's using free verse to do that. I don't know if Grace has ever studied poetry or knows about all this, but this is exactly what she should be doing. If she's trying to be harsh about this, then free verse is the way to do it. And she does it. And still she hasn't rhymed. Okay. Okay, I get it. I know that I've fallen off. Haven't left this room in three days going strong. That's nice. Three days going strong. I mean, she's strongly embedded her, her room. I love the way she uses words. Going strong. And then she goes, one for all my heartbreak. And you think, that's one is a cardinal number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you think she's going to go one for all my heartbreak. She, you know, we, we know three days going strong. So the next one is going to be two, right? She said one. So it's going to be two. 
Two is going to be something else. But no, that's not Grace Vanderwall. She keeps us off balance. She does this all the time in her music, but she keeps us off balance. One for all my heartache. The second day, she doesn't say it. The second got no do, got no clue, excuse me. The second got no clue. And third, for all my mistakes, I wish I could undo. So this is the only, or this is one of the few times she rhymes in the song, but she goes from the cardinal numbers, one, to ordinal numbers, the second, and then the third. This keeps us off balance and makes us pay attention. And then she rhymes, softening up a little bit uh, the way we feel because of her rhyme. The second got no clue. And third, for all my mistakes, I wish I could undo. So we, we feel a little bit emotional because she is now rhyming. She's not used, I mean, she's yeah rhyming she's not using rhythm though there are not exact rhythm so the the full emotional effect isn't there which is interesting so um that's she she's finally getting into rhyme okay so then the third verse I said I'd get it I need to clean myself up I pretended best I could but you still saw through yeah now she's getting more defensive or more defiant at the walls who are still that are still her conscience i said i get it now the thing that's interesting about this is all she's done in the previous verse is tell us what's going on she hasn't told us that the walls have said anything else to her so it's implied now she's implying She's moving us way ahead and implying that the walls have kept talking to her. But she hasn't let us know that. She's implying it by saying, I said, I get it. <laughs> That's so phenomenal. The wall, her conscience is not letting up. I mean, really. You know, you ever been there where you're, you're getting on yourself and you're like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And that's what she gets across on this. It's, it's, it's just genius the way she does that. I said I get it. I need to clean myself up. And uh, this is, again, her sort of mea culpa. And she's about to really start getting on herself here in a little bit. But that's where this is going. The, the conscience is digging in. And she is looking at herself and realizing how messed up she's been she thinks she's been messed up for the last three days the criticism the self-criticism i need to clean myself up i pretended best i could but you still saw you the walls her conscience still saw through it all through all my theatrics and of course the shitty actress is about the theatrics the theatrics of pretending that things are okay because that, that's what it, that's what this song is about. It's pretending you're okay, but your conscience, and you've been trying to trick yourself, your conscience, into believing everything's okay, but it's not. Uh, j just as a side note, um, I think everybody has done that before. I know I've done it before. And in the mid-90s, I was writing a book. And some days, I, when I got up to write, Instead, I would go out and mow the yard or dust the shelves or clean up the house or whatever to avoid writing. And, of course, I'd get back over to start writing, and I'm like, what did you just do? Well, I mean, why didn't you sit down to write? What, what were you doing? And what I was doing was avoidance. And that was my theatrics. That was my shitty actor, you know, acting like I was doing something, but I really wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. So I think this is a common thing and which makes this uh, universal. This song is universal because we've all been shitty actors, shitty actresses. We've all done that, trying to fool ourselves and our conscience catches us. It's like, what were you doing? Yeah, I pretended best I could, but you still saw through all my theatrics, theatrics. tried to seem okay. That clip, that free verse clip, try to see, 
long, I pretended best I could, but you, st you still saw through all my theatrics, long sentence, tried to seem okay, free verse, guess I'm a shitty actress. Guess I'm a shitty actress. And that's kind of nonchalant, you know, the way she does that. Like she's not being totally harsh by saying, guess I'm a shitty actress or guess I'm a shitty, or maybe she is being, you know, because she's using the word shitty instead of guess I'm a bad actress. So then she lets it sit for a little bit with the O and then the O. <laughs> By the way, the way she sings it, two things. If you just read this, which is what I'm doing now for all of you, um, if you just read it, it's pretty harsh. But Grace brings a almost an almost sublime, comfortable sound to the song. Like she's gone through it, and now I'm just letting everybody know, and I am emotionally okay with this. So one of the great things about, obviously, songs instead of literary poetry where you're reading it and you're like, damn, boy, they're being hard on themselves. The song itself does not come across that way. It just comes across as honest and emotional. So uh, that after the O and the O, um, she comes back. And now what she's done is she's got her conscience, the walls, actually talking to her. And before they were mocking her, but now they're actually judging her, talking to her. You said you're kind of sick, I'm gonna keep it to myself. I said I know, trust me, no one hates me more than I do. I think I need some help, been a loop of hell, talking to myself, trying to escape this temptation. You said you were kind of sick of me keeping to myself. You said, you, the walls. You said you were kind of sick of me keeping to myself. She's talking to herself. She's, she's using the walls as her conscience. Personified. It's just, it's, just a, it's just what a clever idea. And maybe that makes it easier. You know? Because the walls are tactile. It's like a tactile conscience. It's kind of interesting, don't you think? I said, I know, trust me, no one hates me more than I do. Wow, that's seriously harsh. And this is Grace Vanderwall. We, we all, all Grace lovers out there know that Grace Vanderwall has done this at least a dozen times in her song where she gets on herself. It's momentary, just like this is momentary, but it's throughout a whole song. She hasn't done that before. But I mean, like in uh, The City where she says, what, I know I might be boring but I'm not one for pity, but I know I might be boring. And she, of course she's done this kind of thing, that kind of thing many times. Um, so we know that she is, she has this predilection for personal honesty and criticism about herself. It's one of the things that makes grace so enormously great is that honesty and that self-reflection. And as I've said before, it also, I think, gives her humor. I mean, if you've dug down and been that honest with yourself, well, then you're going to be that honest about the whole world, about everybody else, because you got, you've got license. That gives you license. Hey, I'm not any harder on any of you than I am on myself. But anyway, right here, she is really being hard on herself. I, I said, I know. Trust me, no one hates me more than I do. <laughs> She's saying that to the walls. I just love that image. I think I need some help. Harsher still. I think I need some help. Been in a lot of hell. I mean, if she's been in that kind of hell, is there really theatrics going on? I mean, basically what she's saying is, I've been in a lot of hell, but I haven't been dealing with it. I've been basically languishing in it. And so, therefore, the theatrics, I'm trying to pretend like I'm not languishing in my, utter, in my hell. Talking to myself, trying to, trying to escape this damn bedroom. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, it's a great image. I'm trying my best to keep you from knowing All of this fucked up shit that I am going through But it takes so much energy to put on a good show A good show okay. 
Okay. I'm trying my best to keep you from knowing. And now, yet again, right at the walls. I'm trying my best to keep you from knowing. So this is the shitty actress part. And uh, I like how she keeps it present tense also. All of this fucked up shit that I'm going through the go. So she does knowing and going. So this is the other time in the, in the song where she rhymes. I'm trying my best to keep you from knowing all of this fucked up shit that I'm going through, but it takes so much energy to put energy to put on a good show, a good show, driving that home. It's a frank evasion. Um, and she's being frank about the evasion um, that we, we all do. All of us humans do, right? And <clears throat> she is just putting it right out there for all of us. And then, then she goes into, uh, okay, I get it. So uh, the, the, thing, the thing that amazes me about, several things amaze me about this. I mean, she's the self-criticism, the ingenious idea of personifying walls as your conscience in there with, in the bedroom with you, watching you while you've had, while you've been languishing in your misery for three days or misery for two days. And one day she doesn't have a clue. Um, how many of us have been there on that before? Um, but that whole, that whole idea and then the way she executes it with giving us the facts in free verse and then slight uh, poetic rhyming, rhyming and rhythm that goes in as well. Um, but also another thing that really impresses me about this is how harsh she is, how she doesn't, she doesn't allow herself to escape. And I think a lot of people, even people I've known, when they go there, when they're that harsh with themselves, they don't come back out of that. They overjudge themselves. They're overly judgmental. And they think, oh my God, I can't believe I was that way. I've got to watch myself, but I'll probably fall back into that again. Maybe I'm just that way. And so there's this, this endless repeat of self-recrimination that's going on. But with Grace, especially the way she sings it, and of course all of her other music, it's clear that what she's doing is a deep dive, honest and introspective and judgmental on herself. And in this case, using a tactile manifestation of her conscience. It's just simply brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So one last thing I was going to say on this concerning the free verse is that not too many, if you look back on, on music for the last hundred years, not too many lyricists use free verse where you're getting across just the facts about what's going on because it is so harsh. It's, it's less sing-songy. So um, a couple of examples of people ha who have done it big examples are America, Simon and Garfunkel with America, and they, they've got a phrase in there, let us be lovers, we'll marry our fortunes together, I've got some real estate here in my bag, and then it goes on and continues the free verse, and you're following along with the story, but there's no sort of emotional release on it, you're just following it along, and it's not really one of my favorite songs by them, maybe for that reason, because there's the story itself I'm not real crazy about. And then, and then the other biggie, another biggie, is Sheryl Crow, Crow's All I Want to Do. I love this song, but I hadn't realized until I came back across it that she uses mostly free verse, almost entirely free verse in the song with hardly any rhyme. She starts it out, hit it, this ain't no disco, it ain't no country club either, this is L.A. All I want to do is have a little fun before I die says the man next to me out of nowhere, it's apropos of nothing. It's got such a good beat, the song does, that you don't mind that it doesn't rhyme. But those are just two, uh, two examples of not very many, especially big songs that don't have rhyme. But one person who has actually scattered a lot of free verse through her lyricism is Grace Vanderwall herself. Look back through her songs. And you will find a lot of them, including lungs, which does have a lot of um, repetition rhyme, you know, like 
uh, what is it? Young, lungs and lungs, young and young, old and old. So, you know, it does that which is not really rhyme, it's more of a repetition thing, but then she's got two complete verses with, that are just free verse. A patter of rain pattering on my window makes me smile and feel refreshed. But then I'm walking down the street in the middle of the night, singing these lyrics to me, kinds of starts messing with my head. There's no rhyme in there. So that's six lines in a long verse with no rhyme. And then uh, she's got that one shorter verse, listen to the breath of my voice, just close your eyes and just go. Let's just live life as we are, because we, we only have limited time. So it's really interesting that in that song, what she has is constant rhyming, repetition rhyming with lungs, lungs, young, young, old, old, all that. And then she goes into two complete stark verses where she tells a story with free verse. So Grace herself has done this before. It's just that she's never done it through an entire song before, or almost through the entire song before, like she does with Shitty Actress. So the main points I want to make on this episode 12 of Finding Grace is that she has gone into new territory yet again with her music, probably not intending to do so. It's just her, the way her mind works. Uh, no rules on sounds and on words. And so she has done a completely self-critical song and a song that personifies um, the walls around her as her conscience, observing her and uh, uh, castigating her. Wow, it's incredible. So that's Grace Vanderwall and Shitty Actress. Please let me know. If I've made any mistakes or if you know of any other examples like what I've talked about, I couldn't find any. I, I, none came to my head, but she is simply a remarkable, remarkable soul indeed, isn't she? Okay, y'all, thanks a lot. I'll catch you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.